Our story begins with Vegeta in the gravity machine training after the events of the Moro Saga. On his mind, he can't help but think of Goku's latest achievements relating to Ultra Instinct and his continual improvement. How far Vegeta has come during his training so far, however, is unknown at this point. The door to the gravity machine suddenly then opens, and his only son Trunks appears with a mysterious and curious look on his face. Vegeta is more stunned that he's even approached the machine and disturbed him. Trunks then starts to speak and shockingly inquires, Hey Dad, I just wanted to ask, how come I've never met Grandpa? <gasps> Vegeta is immediately shocked. He can't believe Trunks would mention his father out of the blue. After all, no one has even spoken of King Vegeta since Beerus arrived, and he had fallen out of Vegeta's head for almost a decade. He questions Trunks, Hmm, <laughs> your grandfather, huh? What made you decide to bring him up? I don't ever recall telling you about him. If you didn't know, your grandfather died a long time ago, many years before you were born, and even before I had met that woman, Bulma. Explain, now. Trunks goes on to explain that earlier in the day, he was spending time with Gohan and Pan when Goku arrived. He heard Pan call Goku Grandpa for the first time, and he suddenly realized their family dynamic was different to his. Even though he had Grandpa briefs, he didn't have a Saiyan Grandpa to play with or learn from. He's always been fascinated with the fact his father Vegeta was the prince of all Saiyans, so to meet the king would be a dream come true. He then mentions to Vegeta the idea that they could just use the Dragon Balls to revive him, and he wonders why out of all the times Shenron was summoned, Vegeta never thought to revive his own father. He points at Vegeta with a devious look and proclaims, Dad, you need to spill the beans. I want to know everything about Grandpa. Was he an evil supervillain with unimaginable power? Is that the reason we can't bring him back? Is he even stronger than you? Vegeta is stunned at Trunks' imagination and lack of awareness, saying things about his father that just couldn't be further from the truth. Vegeta for a second, takes time to remember his father so that he can finally tell his son the truth about King Vegeta. Vegeta then begins to tell the true story of what happened on their home planet. No son, when I really think about my father, he was a good man, a great man, a true warrior and king of the Saiyans who protected me from both Beerus and Frieza when I was a child. The Saiyans back then didn't have anything like the power we have now. Yet in the end, my father still challenged Frieza on his own one on one. That tyrant ended up murdering him there and later destroyed our home, Planet Vegeta along with the rest of the Saiyans. When it happened, I was far away on a mission. When I heard, the pain was deep, but as a Saiyan prince, I couldn't show any emotion and since that day, I've never spoken of it. And that, my son, is the story of your grandfather, Trunks. <laughs> Trunks, upon hearing the complete story, is in shock. He didn't imagine his grandfather died in such a way, and for the first time, he learns the truth of how the Saiyans were wiped out. He feels a sense of pride in finally knowing that though his grandfather wasn't strong, he was a brave warrior to the end. He questions Vegeta again as to why he hasn't revived him. How could he leave his own father behind? Vegeta is then quick, however, to disregard Trunks' suggestion, explaining, Don't be ridiculous, Trunks. The Saiyans were a different breed back then. We conquered planets, murdered millions, and were a fighting race that annihilated everything and anything that stood in our way. Trunks is quicker, however, to respond, But you just said they were much weaker than us. If Grandpa couldn't even defeat Frieza, then do you really think he could stop a group of Super Saiyans? There's a slight pause while Vegeta thinks on Trunks' words. Complete <laughs> awkward silence as he realizes Trunks is completely right. He lets out a disgruntled, Fine, you win. But the Dragon Balls are not for my every women wish. We'll need to ask Kakara and the others, if it's okay. Now get out of here. I'm not finished training. Some time then passes and Vegeta gets all of the Z-Fires gathered together on Kami's lookout. Huh? Goku is immediately surprised at Vegeta's request 
and so too is Piccolo, Chaozu, Tien, Yamcha, Krillin and Gohan. Goku however with his simplistic brain replicates the thoughts of Trunks and yells, Wow! The King of the Saiyans! I can't wait to see how strong he is! I bet he's even stronger than you Vegeta right? Vegeta can't help but look away in annoyance, choosing not to explain the entire story again to Goku. And so with the help of all of the Z Fighters, all of the Dragon Balls are gathered again, all found at random parts of the world and using the multiple Dragon Ball Scouters that Bulma produced especially for the mission. Shenron is then eventually summoned in front of everyone, the dragon emerges and with its typical deep voice questions, I am Shenron, name your wish. Vegeta stares at the dragon, this being the first time he himself has ever made a wish on the Dragon Balls. Running through his mind, he thinks back to when chasing the Dragon Balls for immortality is all he wished for, before returning to demand, DRAGON! A wish for my father King Vegeta to be brought back to life and then transported here to earth in front of me. Shenron takes a moment before he replies, Your wish shall be granted. And his eyes begin to shine. And just like that, King Vegeta appears, shot and in complete disbelief and disorientation. Vegeta smiles, but is more happy to see the sheer happiness and excitement he can see on Trunks' face. This is a special moment as two generations finally meet. Goku on the other hand comments to Piccolo, Damn, so that's King Vegeta. Vegeta's dad literally looks just like him. I wonder what mine looks like. Not knowing the irony of what he's saying with Bardock being an even greater spitting image of Goku. While everyone is excited and making noise at the revival of King Vegeta, the dragon requests for the final wish and Vegeta mutters something but no one listens in. With the mysterious wish placed, Shenron disappears and the Dragon Balls shoot off once again. In the distance, across from Vegeta, King Vegeta remains silent and in complete shock. The two stare down each other, King Vegeta can't quite believe that this grown man is his young son Vegeta. The last time he saw him was when he was a young scrawny child, no taller than his tail. Immediately, King Vegeta closes the gap and grabs Vegeta. He hugs him, for perhaps the first time in Vegeta's life, as he is overcome with emotion being reunited with his son. But as quickly as he embraces Vegeta, he then immediately punches him to the ground. <laughs> Vegeta lands on the ground almost expecting the beating and the king yells to him, You fool! Just how long did you need to take to avenge me? I've been waiting decades for this moment. Do you have any idea what hell awaits for us Saiyans in the afterlife? I should kill you. Vegeta wipes off the scuff to his chin from his father in silence, being completely unfazed by his father's reaction, knowing personally what he would be like, and then begins to proceed to explain everything that has led up to this moment in an effort to appease him. First explain how he met another Saiyan named Kakarot in their battle and how he lost to a low class warrior. The eventual battle of Frieza, where that low class warrior then avenged the Saiyans, the battle of Cell, the monster Margin Buu, the return of Frieza, the appearance of Beerus the Destroyer, Zamasu, the son of Paragus Broly and of course Moro. He finally then reveals how in all that time he also fathered a son and daughter and started a family of his own too. Vegeta then turns and signals King Vegeta to follow him. Come father, all those years of being dead has probably left you hungry. We'll have more to discuss over dinner. King Vegeta however remains completely gobsmacked at the entire incredible story Vegeta just eyed out, especially concerning Frieza and the low class Saiyan warrior who managed to outshine even the Vegeta bloodline. While King Vegeta still appears bemused, he looks down and notices a young blushing child with strange purple hair. Surely this couldn't be the son Vegeta spoke of. But lo and behold, Trunks nervously starts stuttering out, Uh, Grandpa? Sorry, your highness. My name is Trunks. I'm Vegeta's son. I mean, your son's son. I mean... Not knowing what to say, Trunks then jumps onto King Vegeta, embracing his grandfather for the first time. King Vegeta holds onto him, again shocked, but understands the young boy's feelings. He looks to Vegeta, and Vegeta signals to him to follow him back home. And so, the three finally leave. 
Some time has passed and both Vegeta and King Vegeta have chained into everyday clothes. Vegeta and Trunks lead the king to the mountains to discuss in peace the events leading up to this day. Vegeta has just revealed the low class warrior who he spoke of, Kakarot, was actually the son of Bardock. What? Bardock? You can't be serious. He was a talented warrior for his level, but he was nowhere near close enough to match the elite. His first son Raditz, if I remember correctly, had one of the lowest power levels of the young soldiers. He was only assigned to your squad to level out with your skill. To think, Bardock's son escaped planet Vegeta unnoticed, grew up on this weak planet, and defeated him. I still remember the day everything was changed and our people were lost forever. To think, the legendary Super Saiyan transformation was real. The warrior that comes every 1000 years arrived at just the right moment in Kakarot and gave Frieza what he truly deserved. I always did think you would be the one son to avenge the Saiyans, become a Super Saiyan and rule the universe with incredible power. But I guess fate has a funny way of settling things. While King Vegeta praises Goku and his Super Saiyan transformation however, Trunks then interrupts. Hey Grandpa, Goku isn't the only Super Saiyan you know, there's two others right here. Huh? King Vegeta immediately looks shocked wondering what the child means, before a cocky smirk appears across Vegeta's face. The ground begins to rumble as Vegeta's power level begins to skyrocket. King Vegeta despite not even being able to sense power levels can feel himself as the air thickens and a monstrous aura leaks from Vegeta. Vegeta's hair begins to shift from black to blonde and his eyes change colour. Suddenly, Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan. King Vegeta is left speechless, all this time talking about Kakarot and he didn't consider that his own son, Vegeta too, could have also achieved this legendary form. He mutters, how? How is this possible, son? The legendary warrior was supposed to appear every 1000 years. Are you telling me two appeared in the same era? This power. How is it possible for one being to possess such strength? So this is the true final form of the Saiyans. The ultimate transformation. However, Vegeta almost finding his father's response comedic, responds, <laughs> Oh father. The legendary Super Saiyan you speak of is nonsense. This is child's play. Even your little grandson over there can do this. Allow me to show you true power. The levels beyond Super Saiyan. The levels that rival the gods themselves. <laughs> and then transform once more to Super Saiyan 2, leaving King Vegeta even more shocked. This father is called a Super Saiyan 2. Impressive, but nowhere near the level of what your son has truly achieved. He closes his eyes, focusing himself as his aura turns from yellow to red. He transforms into his Super Saiyan God form, followed by his Super Saiyan Blue form, and finally his Limit Break Evolution Blue form. At this point, King Vegeta is overcome with so much surprise and shock, he sweats profusely and steps back in a mixture of awe and fear. Even he can sense the godly power Vegeta now possesses, unlike anything he has seen or read about in the legends of the Saiyan race. However, Vegeta continues to grin with incredible confidence as it appears he has one last trick and transformation up his sleeve. Without hesitation, Vegeta's hair becomes completely white, his eyes grey and a strange aura envelops him. Vegeta has entered Mastered Ultra Instinct, and his secret wish from earlier has become all the more clearer. In the final scene, King Vegeta is now in a state of shock that causes him to collapse, and Kid Trunks looks on at his father proud and with a smile. Our story begins with Vegeta standing in his surprising Ultra Instinct form, but Trunks' smile begins to dissipate as he realises how his father must have achieved this form by cheating, wishing from Shenron. He asks Vegeta, Dad, I've never seen that form from you before. Isn't that what Gohan and the others describe as Ultra Instinct? The move Goten's dad used? 
Don't tell me you took an easy way out and wished for this power. Vegeta immediately however stares back with a stern face, insulted that even the thought his own son would believe him to wish for power instead of working for it. He replies, huh, Idiot! Shows how well you know your old man, Trunks. The Prince of All Saiyans would never dream to wish for more power. Nor could Shenron even grant a divine skill like this. No, the form you see here is no transformation. It's a technique. A technique born from a state of mind where you are calm and collected and move without thinking. During the Tournament of Power, I experimented with this against a fellow named Jiren and had some success. After all, I am a Saiyan prodigy with far more talent than Kakarot could ever hope to have. The only thing that kept me behind with regards to this technique is that as a true Saiyan, my mind since the day I was born was premeditated to lean towards anger, evil, hatred and strategic thinking. Since the day I arrived on this planet, I've shown the weakness of my Saiyan mind on multiple occasions, something Kakarot never had ever since he fell on his head. It's not something I could change with some form of pitiful therapy from an earthling, and I realized that long ago. But Shenron however, he most definitely had the power to change a mortal's mind instantly, and reset it back to a calm and controlled state. I always knew if I had this, my mastery of Ultra Instinct would far surpass Kakarot's, and so, that is exactly what I wished for from Shenron. I wished to have complete control of my mind and emotions and instantly, with all the training I've received from Beerus and Whis, my ascension was complete. <laughs> King Vegeta however, hears the mention of the destroyer Beerus and immediately interrupts. What? Training with Beerus? The god of destruction Beerus? That evil cat that treated me like a footstool! It cannot be. Did you really train with him? Vegeta responds with a head nod, and King Vegeta continues, Of course. Where and how else could you obtain such incredible power? I never got to see Beerus' true strength. But tell me Vegeta, is there now a Saiyan stronger than even a god of destruction? Have you ever fought Beerus? Vegeta takes a moment and then responds, With this new power, I wouldn't know for sure. The extent of how strong Beerus is is also something we haven't seen either. For all we know, he too could possess Ultra Instinct to some level, or an even greater ability altogether. He's mentioned to me in the past the existence of alternative techniques better suited to chaotic minds. But no, I have never fought him. Kakarot has, however, as a Super Saiyan God. Bardock's son is the savior of this planet and saved everyone here, myself included, multiple times. As much as I hate to admit it, he alone also unlocked Ultra Instinct at a crucial time to save our entire universe from extinction during the Tournament of Power. Right now, if there was any Saiyan who could surpass Beerus, it would be Kakarot. King Vegeta with sweat coming down his face finds it hard to believe Vegeta's words. He thinks back to the past. It just doesn't make sense son. I vividly remember the crying baby that woke all the other Saiyan babies each day. A low power level brat that even Bardock didn't have high hopes for. I can't understand how this baby grew up to become a legendary hero. In all the Saiyan history books, our bloodline was key to unlocking the true potential of the Saiyan. But from what I've seen so far, it doesn't seem to be the case. Listen Vegeta, I must see Bardock's son. Now, I must meet this savior of the universe, the son of one of my loyalist subjects. I have much to ask and tell him. Vegeta, initially surprised at his father's sudden request, eventually succumbs, and the three fly off towards Goku's home. Eventually they arrive at the peaceful locale, but Goku doesn't seem to be seen. The three Saiyans then land 
and see a familiar hairstyle in the distance. Huh? Vegeta! There seems to be a mini Kakarot over there! I assume that's his son, huh? He too looks staggeringly like Bardock. I wonder if he also possesses great potential. While King Vegeta stares in deep thought awkwardly at the young Goten, Goten waves at Trunks and asks him, Hey Trunks, what are you doing here? Is that your grandpa? It's so boring around here since Gohan left. Wanna play? With a huge smile on his face, Trunks says, Sure, let's do it. But I warn you, I'm not going easy on you. I'm pumped up after seeing my dad transform. Goten responds, Oh, are we going super? Yay, it's been a while. I'm winning this time. The two young Saiyans then immediately transform into Super Saiyans and get ready for battle. <laughs> As the two child Super Saiyans clash, King Vegeta watches on from below, again trying his best to understand what he sees in his new life on Earth. He talks to himself. The legendary transformation. Reduced to a child's plaything. Two brats. Just about taller than my tail. Both could have destroyed our entire race if they wanted to. One the grandson of me. And the other the grandson of Bardock. I wonder if I'm still dead or this is really reality. As King Vegeta patiently watches on, a familiar figure spots them from afar. Hey Vegeta! Surprising to see you here. It's normally me who has to come see you. And wait, is that your dad too? The King of the Saiyans? Goku immediately rushes over and nervously begins talking. Uh, your highness. Uh, no, your sire. Mr. King, Vegeta's dad. It's a great honor. My name is Goku. I'm a Saiyan from Earth. You might know me as Kakarot, but before he can continue any further, King Vegeta grabs hold of Goku with both hands and stares at him intensely and begins to talk. My god, it's like looking at Bardock himself. This strong frame, I can sense great power in you. I've learned from my son of everything you did. I can't begin to thank you for defeating Frieza and avenging our people. I only wish your father Bardock and your mother Jine could see you now. I want you to know, I'm so very proud of you and they would be too. You must see them one day. Goku listens to King Vegeta's speech, but throughout it all remains confused. He doesn't recognize any of the names apart from Frieza and asks him, uh, Bardock and Jine? Who's that? Are they saying kings too? <gasps> Vegeta is immediately stunned by Goku's response. He cannot fathom or understand how he doesn't know about his mother and father and the incredible sacrifice they made to save him. He begins to mutter, What, what do you mean, Kakarot? How do you not know Bardock and Jine? How do you not know your own father and mother? Your father died battling Frieza. He was a true Saiyan warrior to the end and one of the bravest men I ever knew. Are you truly telling me you know nothing of him or Jine either? Goku looks back surprised, hearing the first ever details about his father and his apparent bravery and final stand against Frieza. He replies and thinks to himself, Wow. So my father was called Bardock? Sounds like a tough guy. And my mother was called Jine? I guess I was only a baby when I came to Earth. Why is it so important that I don't remember them? My grandpa Gohan is the one who raised me and saved me from growing up alone. I'm sure they're cool, but I don't understand what the big deal is. King Vegeta's face then turns from shock to disappointment and begins to feel the duty to explain to Goku and his sons the truth about his parents and what they went through to save him. He begins, Kakarot, it pains my heart to know you lived all these years not remembering your beloved parents, but I will tell you their story. Kakarot, when you were born, your father was a combat leader leading a team across the galaxy, following Frieza's orders. For years, like all of us Saiyans, 
He followed his commands and conquered many planets, and with ease too. As a combat leader, he was one of the most skilled Saiyans around. Your mother Jina, in contrast, was a fine woman who stayed home and prepared food for the family. One day, Frieza ordered all the Saiyans back to planet Vegeta, and your father, with his natural instinct, immediately sensed something was off and realized Frieza was planning to annihilate us all. When Bardock arrived home, he met with your mother and watched as you slept, before telling Jine about his gruesome prediction and demanded that she had faith in him, as they both then stole a Saiyan space bond, a crime punishable by death and difficult to do, to then place you inside it instead of them. Your mother loved you, Kakarot, more than most Saiyan mothers, and couldn't bear to be apart from you. Your parents, while sacrificing their own to save your life, said their last goodbye and sent you away to a weak planet while they remained behind. Sad, but at least satisfied that you would grow up safe. Ultimately, Bardock rushed to Frieza and attempted to defeat himself, but in the end, Bardock and Jine were both destroyed with the rest of the planet. With their last thoughts, just wondering if you were safe and whether they would ever see you again. Goku, after hearing this story for the first ever time, is overcome with extreme emotion. Despite all his training with Mirus to control his emotions, tears immediately streamed down his face without control. With just King Vegeta's words, all the emotion, hope and love of his late parents strike him at once and the mighty warrior breaks down. He wipes his face, trying to stop the tears, but it's in vain. King Vegeta meanwhile carries on, I only learned of this later on in the afterlife, after meeting Bardock again. We had become great friends, and though we were both in hell, we remain happy that both you and Vegeta lived on. I don't know when my time will come now that I've been revived, but one day I truly hope to see him again and tell him just how his son turned out and how you became an even greater hero than him. Both him and Jine would be so proud and so happy that their sacrifice and gamble wasn't in vain. From what I've learned Kakarot, you have embodied all the best parts of your two parents. The selflessness of your mother Jine and the sheer bravery of your father Bardock. You not only have saved this planet of yours countless times, but saved even this entire universe with your power. Power that is exclusive to us Saiyans. And on top of that, you alone were the one to get revenge for us all. Something not even my own son Vegeta could do. And for that reason Kakarot, I must bow down to you. I cannot claim to be the king of a Saiyan of your caliber. Thank you for everything you have done for us and this universe. <coughs> Everyone is immediately shocked, including Goku, to see the king bow down and to bow down to someone like Goku. But when King Vegeta raises his head back up, he begins to say, And what I'm trying to say, Kakra, is... Given all the things you've done, and how you've grown into such a fine man, and how I would have been much older right now had I not died, it is my duty to pass over my kingship. It is my royal decree that I call you the new king of the Saiyans, Kakarot. What? <gasps> Immediately, an unbelievable wave of shock ripples across Goku, Vegeta and the two boys. Goku mutters, What? What? Me? Me? The king of the Saiyans? Vegeta in his head thinks, Did this old man just say what I think he said? Father! Don't be absurd. The rightful king if anyone is me. I am the prince. The role of the Saiyan royalty has been held by and passed down the Vegeta bloodline for centuries. A low class warrior cannot taint our history and become king. I don't even care to become king, but I'd rather die than see Kakarot become my king. 
I say we fight now. Winner takes all! King Vegeta, however, with an emotionless face, interjects, No, Vegeta. The right of the Saiyan royalty belongs to no family by name. Since the beginning of time, the royal Saiyan family was dictated by power, and power alone. We were the strongest family, and I was the strongest Saiyan, which made me king. As a child, you possessed a higher power level than any before, and you too were on direct track to become king. But things have changed, and undeniably now. Not only was Kakarot's father an unprecedented true representation of this Saiyan pride, fighting to the end in an unwinnable battle, but by your own admission, Kakarot has surpassed even you on numerous occasions, becoming the first Super Saiyan, the first Super Saiyan God, and more. There is no Saiyan out there more powerful or more deserving of the title of king than him. Hearing the two Vegeta's bicker, Goku finally interrupts with his thoughts saying, Hey guys, stop stop, as much as I'm really honoured to be considered the new king, to tell you the truth, I don't even consider myself that much of a Saiyan. I'm an earthling, I was raised here and I became who I am today, surrounded by my earthling friends and family. Over the years, they've helped me just as much as I've helped them in saving the world and the universe. Without them, I'd be nothing, and many of the great foes I faced were only beaten with the combined strength of them. As much as I have a newfound pride in my parents and the Saiyans, I can't accept that title as an Earthling King Vegeta. But, in other news, I do have a proposal instead for you that I've been thinking about. So you mentioned you were the strongest Saiyan on planet Vegeta, right? That must mean you would have been stronger than both Raditz and Vegeta when they arrived. I bet if you had replaced them back then, I'd have had no chance to beat you. And I can't help but wonder how strong you'd be if you'd progressed and trained like Vegeta and I have till now. Not too long ago, Vegeta and I met some Saiyans from an alternate universe. They were young and didn't know how to become Super Saiyans. But after the smallest bit of training, all three came leaps and bounds, with one of them called Kale coming unexpectedly close in power to a Super Saiyan God. I personally don't think becoming a Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan God is the most difficult thing in the world to teach, and Super Saiyan Blue is just a Super Saiyan version of a Super Saiyan God. So, what my proposal is, I want to train you King Vegeta to become a full power Super Saiyan God. I want to fight the king of the Saiyans at his best. Do you accept? What? <laughs> and with that, everyone is left speechless, trying to take in the wacky idea that just left Goku's mouth, and whether King Vegeta would actually accept. Our story continues from when Goku reveals to everyone his intention to train King Vegeta to become a Super Saiyan God, hoping to fight him at his best. Understandably, Vegeta is completely aggravated. Kakarot! What the hell are you talking about? I didn't bring my father back to life just to become your next training partner. How dare you insult Saiyan royalty like this? Goku quickly responds begging, Oh Vegeta, please! I haven't had a good fighting partner since Moro. I don't know if I'll ever fight anyone as strong as he was, and it's getting boring around here. Vegeta's face gets angrier at Goku's careless comment, as a massive vein begins to pop out from his forehead. What did you just say, clown? No good fighting partners. We fought just days ago. What about me? Do you think you're so far beyond me, I'm not even a challenge anymore? Goku, realizing his mistake and revealing what he said, replies, <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, I must have just totally forgot about you. Of course you're a challenge for me. But still, maybe I just want to fight something different and see some new techniques. Who knows? He's your dad. He could be super strong. Think about it. What if we get another tournament of power? King Vegeta could be so useful against Jiren. And then 
I could have a rematch with Topo in his God of Destruction form. Now that would be awesome. Yukita, however, becomes triggered at Goku's simple mindedness. Kakarot, you absolute imbecile. It doesn't work like that and you know that. Me and you have been training for years, in gravity hundreds of times that of Earth, trained in other dimension for years and faced countless powerful foes. Simply becoming a Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan God isn't going to make my father a strong warrior on the level of me or you. Our power as Saiyans is all based on our power in our base forms. These transformations of ours are simply multipliers. That's why, if I was to fight Gotenks in his Super Saiyan 3 form, I'd probably be able to beat them down as just a Super Saiyan. It's not the same for my father. When we were on planet Vegeta, we thought we were the most powerful beings in the universe, destroying and conquering planets of weakling species daily. My father's power at the time was feared through the galaxy, only ever questioned by Frieza. But, it's not the same now. We both know, Kakarot, that those power levels from back then, even mine, when I arrived on Earth, are completely meaningless and overshadowed by the powers we have now, and even the power of our children too. My father doesn't need his time wasted by you, Kakarot, nor does he need to continue fighting. Give up on your dumb dream. What? Suddenly, King Vegeta has been closely listening in, interrupts with a serious face. Vegeta, I don't care how many years it's been and how old you've gotten, but in what universe do you think you can talk for me? The King of the Saiyans! Whether you become a god or angel, I'm still your father, and you will not make my decisions for me as if I'm a child. There is logic to what Kakro is saying and you shouldn't assume anything about me and what I've been through all these years in hell. If what you say about the Super Saiyan transformations is truly correct, that they work simply as multipliers, then Kakarot may have a point that you weren't aware of. I could become far more powerful than you assume, son. Just what makes you think our Saiyans, a warrior race, just stood around doing nothing for the last 20 plus years? We're bloodthirsty fighters by nature, left in hell with nothing else to do. We had to create our own version of entertainment to get us through eternity. Naturally, we hosted countless makeshift tournaments. We fought every single day. Each time, we would battle until death, since of course, we were already dead and there was nothing to fear. Of course, as we eventually recovered over time, we got stronger each time through what is known as the Saiyan Zenkai Boost. Imagine, every single day we did this, boosting, non-stop. I may not be a Super Saiyan Vegeta, but without any transformation, I can sense that neither you nor Kakra could beat me in your base forms. <gasps> what? Vegeta and even the two boys are completely shocked by King Vegeta's reveal and confidence in himself. Goku, however, is completely overjoyed and yells, I told you so! I knew I sensed something strange about your key. You've been hiding it for some reason. That's it. We need to fight right now, sir. Show me the power of a Saiyan King. I won't transform. I promise. Vegeta, however, remains unconvinced, remembering in his head how earlier on, when he first revived King Vegeta, he punched him. And yet, he barely felt it, as he would expect. He mentions this to King Vegeta, but King Vegeta responds promptly, And what of it? You are my son, who just revived me. Do you really think I would repay you by punching you with the aim to harm you? That was simply a tap. Vegeta looks back with a little surprise, considering he still was floored by the punch. Uh, tap? Huh. Goku, now satisfied with everything he's heard, is pumped up and yells, Okay, enough talking guys, I can't wait anymore. I haven't fought anyone in this form for so long. This will be just like when I first met Vegeta. Let's do it! King Vegeta then accepts 
and gets into a familiar fighting stance. The same one the Vegeta clan had used for centuries. He smiles and remembers Bardock saying, Very well. I fought your father Bardock in hell countless times. It would be an honor to fight his son. I guess after this, I can let you know exactly how you match up to him. Goku responds with a confident smirk, now in his fighting stance and says, Oh really? Now I guess I can't hold back at all. I just have to know, who's stronger, me or my old man? And without a moment's notice, Goku rushes in. After elbowing Goku unexpectedly into the air, with speed, King Vegeta chases after him. Goku, however, recovers in time. <laughs> Not bad, son of Bardock, but show me how you'll deal with this. Goku smiles back. Ha! That's not much for me to deal with, Mr. Vegeta. And immediately dodges King Vegeta's Kibi. I'm not finished. King Vegeta, after missing his kick, is visibly confused at Goku's disappearance. What was that? His key just vanished. Unknown to him, though, Goku used instant transmission to the ground and with a smirk, begins readying a familiar move. Kame! Kame! Impressed with Goku's maneuverability, King Vegeta smiles before concentrating all his power into his fists. He then begins readying, in iconic fashion, the original Gallic Gun. Gallic Gun! Kamehameha! The two unleash their most powerful key blasts completely in sync with each other, both screaming to unleash their max power in base. Eventually, the key collision causes a massive explosion, the scale of which surprises not only the two boys, but Vegeta also. They cover their faces from the debris, blowing forward before Vegeta thinks to himself, It appears my father was in line. This is not how this fight should be going. One slap, let alone multiple attacks, should have been enough to take down the King Vegeta I once knew. He's actually keeping up with Kakarot! No, in fact, he's even got the upper hand on him somehow. As Goku and King Vegeta stay in their positions, amazed at each other's power, King Vegeta remarks, Not bad, not bad at all Kakarot! I almost had to use my full power on that one. Goku with a smile replies, Full power? Stop bluffing. You're as tired as I am. If you've got anything left in the tank, show it to me now. And in an instant, King Vegeta appears right in front of Goku. As you wish, son of Bardock. <laughs> Slamming both his fists point blank onto a shocked Goku. Immediately, Goku goes crashing down into a seemingly bottomless crater while King Vegeta thinks in his mind, the young generation sure is impressive, but there's still much for them to learn. It seems they've relied too much on the power increases of their transformations. Nevertheless, that last hit should do it. However, from the crater, rumbling can be heard. <laughs> and Goku emerges at top speed, ready to clash with King Vegeta once again. A smile comes across King Vegeta's face, however, as if his next move is already planned. Instantly, King Vegeta vanishes and appears behind Goku, immediately trapping him in a stranglehold from behind. The unorthodox primitive technique catches Goku by surprise and he finds no way of escaping as he begins losing the ability to breathe. But just as he's about to lose consciousness, Goku transforms saying and breaks out with ease. King Vegeta responds shocked, huh? You damn liar Kakarot! And Goku returns with a point blank punch straight on King Vegeta to get him away. Yeah! King Vegeta is sent flying into a crash landing but emerges still on one knee. 
wiping the blood off his face while smiling that he forced the legendary hero Goku into transforming just to beat him. He says to himself, <laughs> Looks like we know for sure who's the strongest in our base forms. But that Super Saiyan transformation, that sure is something to behold. Your power went up exponentially. Goku looks down, exhausted and still trying to catch his breath. He thinks to himself, Damn, his strength and technique is incredible. If I didn't transform at the right time, I would have been done for. Vegeta's dad is dangerous. Eventually, Goku goes back down to base, accepting defeat, holding his neck and smiles impressed saying, You weren't kidding at all. That was insane. You fight just like I'd expect a Saiyan to. Ruthless and unpredictable. Any longer and I could have actually died. <laughs> Couldn't do a thing without transforming. So I'm sorry I cheated. But even though I cheated, I have to know. How did I match up to Bardock? King Vegeta smirks and replies, Fighting you felt so nostalgic. You wouldn't believe how similar you two really fight. It's uncanny really. But I'm afraid Kakarot, Bardock and myself are almost the same in battle strength. He improved greatly over the years and is now the only Saiyan in hell who could ever push me to my limit. And as a result, the two of us grew stronger together as rivals. I believe the record on our battles right now is 5,301 wins to me and 5,300 wins to him. 5,300?! Goku then immediately reacts in shock, realizing just how much battle experience King Vegeta has. You're trying to tell me you guys fought over 10,000 times to the death? No wonder you're so strong. I don't think we've been in even 10% of that many battles, and definitely not every one ending in us getting a Zenkai boost. That's literally insane. Can't wait to see what my dad's strength is like. Vegeta, however, is visibly shocked and concerned at the fact he fought 10,000 times. He thinks to himself, With that many battles, my father and those Saiyans would have experienced so many Zenkai boosts, they'd all be incredibly strong. I can't believe my father truly has surpassed us in base strength after all we've been through. I can't even imagine how much of a bad idea it would have been if I did choose to just revive the entirety of planet Vegeta. Now that I think about it, the harsh conditions of Hell and the conditions on Vampa probably aren't too different. No wonder that Broly was so strong as well. Even in base, I couldn't beat him as a Super Saiyan. King Vegeta eventually speaks up and says, <laughs> You're both so surprised, aren't you? I told you boys, we really had nothing better to do in Hell then fight all day. Anyway, that's enough being in awe of me. This is only the beginning. Let's start this training. I can't stand to watch as my own grandson can transform into the legendary form, yet I can't. Goku smiles agreeing and says, Haha, <laughs> okay, let's start. I can't wait either after seeing what you're capable of, Mr. Vegeta. Let's go somewhere else though. Chi Chi will kill me if we keep causing a mess around here. Yo Vegeta, you wanna come too? Vegeta getting a little angry at how Goku is seemingly stealing his own father away, yells at Goku, Huh, he's my father. What do you think this is? Of course I'm coming, clown. And so the three Saiyans then fly off, leaving Goten and Trunks behind. Some time passes, and they then arrive in a desert, and Goku immediately begins to explain. Right, King Vegeta, to become a Super Saiyan, there are two methods we know of. The first is through experiencing an intense emotional anger, and this is what me and Vegeta used. I transformed after I fought Frieza, and I watched him kill my best friend Krillin right before my eyes. For Vegeta, from what he's told me, he was angry and frustrated about me becoming a Super Saiyan and after being on the brink of death and nearly giving up, his rage led him to become a Super Saiyan. But there is another way. 
a way that the Universe 6 Saiyans perfected. It may sound silly, but it was through concentrating all your energy into a certain spot in your back and experience what they describe as a tingle. Apparently, this girl named Cauliflower had it down in just two goes, so it can't be that hard. King Vegeta just looks back a little confused. Universe 6 Saiyans? A tingle in the back? The legendary Super Saiyan transformation is gained by a tingle? Well, I'll give it a try. On our home planet, women were very rarely fighters. So if this young girl called Cauliflower can do it, I cannot call myself a king if I can't do the same. Following this, King Vegeta readies himself and then closes his eyes, focusing on feeling a tingle in his back just as Goku had instructed. And then, while he focuses, he begins to think about the trauma of his past and the rage begins to slowly build inside. That damn Frieza! How I would have wished to have been the Saiyan to destroy you! How I would have loved to watch you die. And Beerus, you overconfident cat. Once I become a god myself, your days as a god of destruction are numbered. You will pay for treating a king as your footstool. Back then I was powerless and lost my son. But today, everything changes. The focus becomes intense as a deadly silence is heard before suddenly, King Vegeta becomes cloaked in a golden aura and the ground around him begins to crumble. In a rage, King Vegeta finally becomes a Super Saiyan. <laughs> Behold my power! Frieza and Beerus bow before me! His muscles now bulge, his hair yellow and his eyes green, the power from his aura continues to flux. Goku and Vegeta can barely believe what they're seeing, as King Vegeta's unexpectedly intense power and talent for transforming shocks both of them. Whoa! Father? As his rage dissipates, King Vegeta looks down at both his hands, marvelling at his new power. He begins, This power! This is incredible! I feel amazing! This is all I needed to do? A tingle? <laughs> I am finally the legendary Super Saiyan King of all the Saiyans! Goku watching on is super impressed and says, Wow! You did it on your first try, Mr. Vegeta! And your power is insane! You haven't even mastered it yet, but I can tell! You're tons stronger than when we became Super Saiyans! King Vegeta now cocky replies, Huh! Of course! What else did you expect from your king? So what's next? This is far easier than I thought. Before he can finish, Vegeta suddenly transforms into a Super Saiyan also, and says to King Vegeta, Huh! The next test will be me, old man. It's about time we had a father-son moment. And as he says this, both him and King Vegeta then get ready for battle. Our story continues in the desert after King Vegeta has transformed and Vegeta has also transformed telling his dad that it's now time to fight him. King Vegeta begins saying, Huh, <laughs> so you finally piped up instead of letting Kakarot steal the show. I've been alive now for a few days and been itching for the moment I could finally trade blows with my son again. Such perfect timing. You will make a fine test for my newly acquired Super Saiyan powers. Vegeta then iconically gets into the same exact stance and replies, Oh, it'll be a test all right, father. Don't think for a second I'll be as easy as a fight as that clown. You can go all out and you can trust me to actually have enough Saiyan pride that I wouldn't dare transform further than this stage no matter what you do. I'm no low class coward. And King Vegeta replies, Huh, I wouldn't expect any less from you son. Goku however looks on awkwardly and embarrassed as the two Vegetas badmouth him. Uh, guys? I'm standing right here. King Vegeta doesn't notice however and carries on, Talking of that coward, 
I don't know what you have up your sleeve, son, but we've already gathered on the strongest in our base forms. It sounded like from your stories, Kakarot had surpassed you, and I'm even stronger. According to you, this Super Saiyan transformation is just a multiplier. So add that all up, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out there's absolutely no way you can win this one, young prince. <laughs> but I appreciate the effort. I'll play with you for a while. Vegeta, however, replies quietly confident, <laughs> Just wait and see, old man. There's more to being a Super Saiyan than just yelling and powering up. I'll make that clear to you soon. Now enough with the chit chat. Make your move, father! And with that, King Vegeta rushes in. As Vegeta smiles excitedly to finally face his father. Yes, just like that. Show me why you're the king of all the Saiyans. And I'll show you what it means to be the strongest Saiyan that ever lived. As King Vegeta ferociously attacks, unlike with Goku, every punch and kick seems to be easily dodged and blocked. And peeking through his defense is a smiling Vegeta who begins provoking the king saying, What's wrong? I thought I said you could go all out. Don't tell me this is all you can do. No wonder Frieza made such short work of you. What a pathetic excuse for a Super Saiyan. What? King Vegeta is immediately left shell-shocked by the words coming from his own son. Not only are his attacks inexplicably looking powerless against Vegeta, but comments regarding Frieza and his death still hit hard. He yells, You dare speak to the king of all Saiyans like this? Your own father. It's time I sent you to the next dimension. King Vegeta then quickly jumps back to put some distance between them and then in a blink of an eye <laughs> fires a powerfully concentrated key beam directly at Vegeta. Vegeta though watches on motionless with a smirk as the beam becomes point blank. <laughs> and shockingly in one fell swoop, Vegeta effortlessly knocks back King Vegeta's attack into the background as if swatting a mere fly. The king at this point is less speechless, muttering, What? What is going on here? Is this really Vegeta? He appears to be a Super Saiyan just like me. I don't understand. If these forms are just multipliers, why is Vegeta making me look like a child? Was Vegeta's base power really this much stronger than Kakarot's? Vegeta, sensing the complete confusion his father is experiencing, continues his provocation. <laughs> What's the matter now? Is the old man confused? Experiencing the first signs of dementia, are we? I thought you were supposed to be stronger than both me and Kakarot, huh? Maybe you should have just stayed in hell with the rest of those weaklings. King Vegeta replies, however, you insolent little twerp! I see 30 years without a father in your life has made you careless. I will teach you by force how to respect your elders. And once again, King Vegeta rushes in at even greater speed. While Vegeta watches on, still smirking. <laughs> Surely you're not trying this again. And just before reaching Vegeta, King Vegeta vanishes. However, having just seen the king use this exact same move on Goku, Vegeta is unfazed and laughs. Ha <laughs> You truly still do fight like a primitive Saiyan, don't you, father? I told you, not to treat me the same as that low-class imbecile Kakarot. And as he says this, King Vegeta immediately appears behind Vegeta, just like before, and grabs Vegeta's neck for a stranglehold. But Vegeta, despite letting him do so, laughs and elbows the king away without needing to transform further at all. Fool! King Vegeta as a result then flies back in pain, but recovers in the air, now infuriated. Immediately, as if second nature, he then flies directly into the air. Let's see you handle this! 
while Vegeta just confidently stares on, almost already expecting what's going to happen next. As King Vegeta reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere, his rage is now at his peak, and he yells down, VEGETA! I don't know for sure what crazy parlor tricks you're using to show me up like this, but I will show you that the legendary Super Saiyan King is not to be underestimated. This match ends here, with our clan's signature move, Gallic Gun vs Gallic Gun. Show me how well you've mastered the ultimate key technique after all these years. And immediately begins concentrating all his key into his final attack. Meanwhile, Vegeta watches on smugly from the ground and responds, Huh! Gallic Gun! Ultimate technique? You're wondering if I mastered it. But dear father, I've gone and surpassed it! Behold, Vegeta the Force greatest attack. You'll learn today how meaningless a king is stood before a god. <laughs> and immediately begins powering up a familiar attack. Gallic Gun Final Flash! In an instant, both fire their beams, but Vegeta's final flash dwarfs King Vegeta's immediately and rushes towards the king at top speed, pushing away his Gallic Gun like it wasn't even there. As fast as it was shot out, it makes contact and a massive explosion is seen. King Vegeta is caught completely, taking the entire force of the blast, while Vegeta, still smiling, watches from below as his father seemingly gets evaporated to dust. Vegeta's final flash blasts off into space, King Vegeta is somehow still alive, but barely. He mutters briefly, Uh, Vegeta. And immediately plummets to Earth in a crash landing. He crawls, looking for Vegeta, now on the brink of death, an experience he felt many times in hell, but for the first time in a long time, he will finally die if left untreated. Goku, who has been watching this entire fight, cannot believe Vegeta's heartlessness and yells, Vegeta, stop! That's enough! He's going to die if we don't find him as Senzu right now! What are you doing? Be quiet, you low-class scum! This is a battle between royalty and a battle between Saiyans. Two things you know nothing about. Our people only fight to the death. And my father knows that. So I'll say this one more time. Stay out of this, or you're next, Kakarot. And as he says this, he walks slowly over to King Vegeta, who has now got onto his knees, with an energy ball powered up in his hands, ready to finally put King Vegeta out of his misery. He then aims his powered up hand towards King Vegeta and coldly tells him, you fought well, father, and I hope you enjoyed your time in the living world. But you lost, and you know what that means. King Vegeta, surprisingly to Goku, however, looks back with a proud smile saying, <laughs> Looks like even after all these years on this planet, you stayed a true Saiyan through and through. Only the strong shall survive, just as I taught you. Thank you for everything. I'm glad I got to see the man you've become. My grandson. And to learn we finally got revenge as a race on Frieza. I'm proud of you. But before you send me to hell, I have to ask, how exactly did you beat me so easily as just a Super Saiyan? Did I truly just underestimate your power, Vegeta? Vegeta with a serious face then replies, no, you didn't underestimate me. You underestimated the power of the Super Saiyan. Like I said, becoming a Super Saiyan is more than just yelling and powering up. Now be quiet. It's time. As he finishes saying this, without a word, he then fires a final key beam point blank at King Vegeta. Goku, still watching on Helpless, yells, Vegeta, no! You've gone too far! 
I thought you changed, but you're still the same! King Vegeta's body then gets caught in the energy, surrounding him as if about to disintegrate him. But in the aftermath of the blast, King Vegeta somehow remains unfazed. Suddenly, he realizes his energy has been restored, and he's partially healed. He queries, Vegeta, what's the meaning of this? Did, did you heal my injuries? Vegeta then responds, not quite. I gave you a portion of my key to keep you alive from the damage I inflicted on you. It's a technique you learn once you've had some time as a Super Saiyan. You didn't really think I was going to barbarically kill you for losing in our sparring match, did you? We aren't on planet Vegeta anymore, and the Saiyans are no more. And along with that, all their customs too. I wanted to enrage you and put the fear of death into this battle so that I could see your full power. As expected, you were no match for me, but I can explain to you why. You see, father, when you became a Super Saiyan, you only just began your journey to master the form. Part 1 of 4. When you first transformed, you reached the level of a Stage 1 Super Saiyan. But beyond that is a Stage 2 Super Saiyan with increased power and speed. And then, there is a bulkier version with tremendous power but lower speed known as the Stage 3 Super Saiyan. And then finally, the mastered Super Saiyan form. The Stage 4 Super Saiyan where you possess both tremendous power and speed. That is the form you fought me in, and the form one step behind becoming a Super Saiyan 2. Unfortunately for you, to reach this level, you need a minimum of one year's training non-stop. King Vegeta in shock at hearing Vegeta's explanation looks at his hands once again, just like he did when he first turned into a Super Saiyan and reflects on his own weakness. It looks like I wasn't as legendary as I thought. There's still a long way to go to even come close to Vegeta or Kakarot. As much as Bardock's son wants me to ascend, I can't hope to make you wait an entire year just to perfect the first form of many. I'm sorry to disappoint you both. But Vegeta, sensing his father becoming disheartened, then smiles and tells him, don't fret, father. It doesn't necessarily need to take that long. At least in the real world. On this planet exists a room. A room where one year can pass inside while only a day passes outside in the real world. It is known as the hyperbolic time chamber. After 30 years apart, I think I can spare one year with you making up for lost time. Vegeta then at super speed grabs King Vegeta and is about to use instant transmission when Goku immediately interrupts saying, Wait Vegeta! What about me? I want to train with you guys too! But Vegeta now at his limit with how much Goku has become involved with his father, yells back, How about you revive your own father fool? Stop clinging onto mine! And instantly teleports away, leaving Goku to think on Vegeta's words. Revive your own father, huh? The scene then changes to Capsule Corp, where eventually, much to Bulma's surprise, Vegeta and King Vegeta arrive by instant transmission. <laughs> Bulma then greets them. Oh, Vegeta, it's you! And your father! I'm so glad you guys have been spending some quality time together. It's so cute! You usually never come to see me. Grandpa Vegeta must be rubbing off on you, honey. Vegeta, however, with an unamused face, responds, Don't ever call me honey in public again, woman. I'm here because I need something. I'm taking my father to the hyperbolic time chamber to train, and we're both in need of some armor that can last the year. How long will you take to craft something? Bulma then looks back a little agitated as usual with Vegeta and says, Hmm, so not even a please or a hello. Just reminding me every day how much of a good decision I made marrying you. Lucky for you, your wife is always prepared and always makes plenty of spares. I still have tons of armor left from when you guys fought Cell. 
Hmm, let me see. Ah, oh, there it is. And with that, Bulma takes out a mysterious capsule from her case and throws it to the ground. In a puff of smoke, Saiyan armor identical to what was worn by Vegeta and Future Trunks back in the Cell Saga is seen in perfect condition. The two Saiyans then carefully pick up the garments and begin putting them on one by one, discarding of their dirty civilian clothes. And standing there in perfect fit is King Vegeta and his son in modern Saiyan armor, courtesy of Bulma, King Vegeta's daughter-in-law. King Vegeta then looks down at what he's wearing and the feel of it before remarking, This armor, it feels so strong and durable, yet it's even lighter than the clothes we were just wearing. Since when did Saiyan armor technology go this far? Vegeta replies, however, finding it funny his father believes this is the work of the Saiyans. <laughs> Saiyan technology? This armor is like this because it's based on the designs Freezer's men made. After they destroyed you, they carried on using our signature armor and improved on it. Immediately, King Vegeta's rage is brought back. That damn Vulture Freezer! Not only did he work us to the bone, but he also stole every little thing he could from our planet. From our technology to even our children. All in the end, so that he could betray us. He will never be forgiven. Vegeta smiles and places his two fingers on his head saying, <laughs> Yes father, keep that rage alive. It will be useful for where we're going now. Hold on tight. It's time to go to the room of spirit in time. And so the two then vanish. King Vegeta, still with a cold and angry face, thinking of Frieza. The two then arrive at Kami's lookout and immediately, like two men on a mission, begin walking straight towards the hyperbolic time chamber. As expected, Dende then spots them and attempts to greet them saying, Ah, Vegeta, long time no see. And I sensed your father has returned too. It's nice to meet you. But the two Vegetas just coldly walk by the Guardian of the Earth as if he doesn't exist. Dende then remarks, Uh, yes, you're welcome to use our facilities, of course. Thanks for asking. <sighs> Guess as they say, like father, like son. <gasps> Eventually, the two Saiyans enter the hyperbolic time chamber and King Vegeta is left completely perplexed, looking out onto an endless sea of nothingness. He remarks, What? What is this? Have I died again? How is this possible? How can such a room exist on the other side of a door? This gravity also is stronger. Vegeta now smiling, ready to begin training, responds, <laughs> Oh father, if this is already scaring you, you have no idea what hell awaits you in here. But that was it for today's manga and if you made it this far, leave me a hashtag Vegeta in the comments down below and let me know if you want a part 5 and give me ideas of what you want to happen. This is my original fan manga written and painstakingly created just for you guys and you can support me on Patreon for $3, less than a cup of coffee, and immediately get access to not only 250 plus other fan mangas, but also this entire manga story too. Check it out, all links will be in the description and pinned comment, but if you want to see more manga content, then click on one of these two videos on the right, right now. Until next video guys, cheers.